10 cybersecurity tools that I can't live without. I put together a list of 10 tools that I use pretty much every single day in that if I had to pick just 10, these are coming with me. They're coming with me. Number one, a password manager. Please use a password manager if you don't already. They allow you to create strong, random, complex passwords. It allows you to store them and access them securely, protect you against phishing, protect you against your account getting compromised. The password manager, I recommend is Bitwarden and I'm gonna die on this hill. I've found that Bitwarden is easy to use. It's free, you can self-host it. There's no limit on the devices or the amount of passwords that you have. It allows you to do two-factor authentication. They use end-to-end -end encryption. They use zero knowledge encryption so they don't store your keys or your master passwords on their servers. And the code is open source, it's on GitHub. So I stand by Bitwarden and I strongly recommend if you don't use a password manager go check them out the next security tool is mfa multi-factor authentication whether it's two-factor authentication temporary one-time passwords push notifications yubi keys whatever it is mfa is important because even if your password gets compromised the attacker still needs a second form of authentication that only you know to take over your account Identify yourself. Who the fuck? It's an extra layer of security in that defense and layers, defense and depth approach. I recommend checking out Intayoth, 2FAs, really anything to at least add MFA to your most important accounts, like your email accounts. Number three is a file analysis, sandbox analysis, call it what you want, Virus Total. Virus Total is a free site. You can analyze hashes, you can upload files and have them analyzed by a bunch of different security engines, analyze URLs, domain domains, IP addresses, all the above. It's important to have some type of analysis tool for threat intelligence. VirusToto is a free, great way to analyze any suspicious files on your computer, to attribute types of malware, to identify hashes or digital signatures on files. It's also a great place to find any community notes. And it's also great if you wanna analyze, upload your own files for analysis against a bunch of different detection engines. For example, if you're at all into malware development or any type of offensive security. You can upload your files and see, hey, would I get caught by this engine or this engine? Can I obfuscate it and get caught by less engines? Can I fly under the radar? Probably not, but it's all for free. It's quick, easy to use. Definitely recommend it. Next is a source of news. This industry moves at a rapid pace and like always, knowledge is power. How can you protect yourself from something that you don't even know about? Some source of reliable news is super important in this space and in any space that moves updates changes rapidly i have two choices here one is bleeping computer and the other is krebs on security i like bleeping computer because they are very fast paced and constantly coming out with new articles every day and i like krebs on security because he's very reliable he's not as quick as bleeping computer but his writing is really interesting it's very detailed and diligent and it's a great source and next up is a note taker this is semi new for me but my recommendation here is obsidian and it's been great great for me to have a formal way, a formal process and tool for taking notes on any device, on any platform. The more you learn, the more you write down, the deeper you dive, that's just the more you can forget and misplace sometimes. And I found having something to help me organize, categorize, take my notes, helps me learn a lot more efficiently. I use it every day for to-do lists, diving deep into research, or if I just want to remember some piece of code that was really hard to figure out. Obsidian has been a great solution for me. They use end-to-end -end encryption. You can self-host it if you want. Definitely recommend checking them out. And next up is a text editor. VS Code is my choice here. On a day-to-day -day basis, I like to have something reliable that I can open and edit uh, all different types of files in, whether you want to edit C or JavaScript, Python, text files, CSVs, whatever it is, VS Code is my go-to. You can use it across platforms, across devices. It's got a familiar, well-developed community, a lot of extensions, a lot of community support and basic ones work too. You know, sometimes you just open it up real quick in notepad, but anytime I want to edit or dive deep, a VS code has been my go-to. It's a great text editor. You can integrate it with GitHub. You can integrate it over SSH. You got the autocorrect, the formatting, the themes, the colors, all that good stuff. Strongly recommend getting a good text editor that you can rely on. And next is a scripting language. I have two here. I would say PowerShell or Python. If you ever want 
want to interact at scale or do tasks at scale, do something super custom, both PowerShell and Python are great options for that. You can do more in Python and it's platform agnostic, but I find myself using PowerShell a lot. So that's why I included them both here, both super useful. And I use scripting on a daily basis. And next is virtual machines, some type of VM solution. If you want to rapidly, quickly deploy some test machines, if you want a sandbox environment where you can analyze malware, develop malware, test some offensive security tools in a safe environment, you know, at your fingertips, you can just spin up virtual computers real quick, bring them up, bring them down. My pick here is VirtualBox. I've found that most importantly, they're free and you can do snapshots for free. They're a quick and easy way to take the guardrails off and do whatever you need to do safely in a virtual environment. And I find myself using them all the time. Next up is a browser. I think for the amount of stuff that probably all of us do on a daily basis in a browser, it's important to have one that's reliable, that's secure, that you enjoy, and that you like the features of. My choice here is Brave. There are so many different browsers and there's probably not a one size fits all. I found that on a daily basis, Brave is the one that I enjoy for a balance of privacy and security and usability. Brave is familiar to me because it's built off of Chromium and it comes with a ton of built-in out-of-the-box security features and they're open source. And I cannot live without a decent browser that I feel is secure enough, private enough, usable enough with the features that I want. And lastly, the 10th security tool that I can't live without is an ad blocker. I genuinely cannot stand ads. I hate all the telemetry, the tracking, and I value my privacy, not to the point where I'm gonna move out off the grid in the woods, but where I can, it's important to me to try and keep my data private. And I cannot live without ad blockers. I've got three recommendations here. In a browser, I use uBlock Origin. I think it's the best bar none. It adds so much security for so little setup and maintenance. I use AdGuard on my phone and iOS for mobile ads. And I also use Pi-hole on my network to block ads, tracking telemetry at the DNS level. There you go, 10 cybersecurity everyday tools that I use on a regular basis that I genuinely use in my own life and I recommend you guys check out. I'll leave the link to check out all these tools down in the description. If you wanna learn more, try it for yourself. Let me know what tools do you use that I left off this list. And as always, thanks for watching.